Small cell lung cancer is one of the most difficult to treat. Even the most promising um, immunotherapy that people heard of, they don't usually work that well in small cell lung cancer patients. Our team discovered that small cell lung cancer, they can form a very unique um, electrical network within the tumors. My name is Lian Li. I work at the Cancer Neuroscience Lab at the Francis Crick Institute. The first authors of this paper are my three talented postdocs, Paula, Marco, and Claudio. Small cell lung cancer accounts for 15% of all lung cancer cases, and importantly, this cancer type is really aggressive. It's characterized by very small cells, which grow very rapidly and form large masses in the lungs. Most of the patients, when they are diagnosed, they already develop metastasis, and at this point, the treatment outcome is really not optimal. In fact, in the past 30, 40 years, there isn't a lot of progress made uh, in small cell lung cancer treatment. Small cell lung cancer is a highly diverse tumor and is mainly composed of two main groups of cancer cells. Neuroendocrine cells, um, they are presenting a neuron-like features and they are highly proliferative and invasive and then non-neuroendocrine cells, they do not have these neuron-like features, but they are playing a supportive role to the neuroendocrine cells. Neurons are the cell types that compose the nervous system, and they are in charge of um, sensing what is in the outer and the inner space and transmit this information throughout the body. They do this by generating electrical activity. It was known that the more neuron-like um, these tumors were, the more aggressive uh, they tended to be. We hypothesized in this study that the neuroendocrine cells of small cell lung cancer could have electrical activity, and therefore we also wanted to study if this electrical activity could play a role in the aggressiveness of these tumors. In this study, we have four main findings. Our first finding was that small cell lung cancer tumors exhibit electrical activity. We took samples from the mouse model that we engineered and we observed electrical activity in these tumors thanks to the marker that we included. We took small cell lung cancer cells from both human and mouse and we observed that only the neuroendocrine cells exhibit electrical activity and not the non-neuroendocrine cells. Our second finding was that small cell lung cancer uh, was more aggressive when they were more electrically active. We determined this uh, by two ways. On one side, we treated the small cell lung cancer cells with a neurotoxin coming from puffer fish, and we observed that only the neuroendocrine cells, their growth was really suppressed, whereas in the non-neuroendocrine cells, they didn't display any effect. The second thing we did was to inject egg small cell lung cancer cells into a healthy mice, and uh, we also added a drug that will cut off the electrical activity. And we observed that when we have this drug, the cells didn't form as many metastases, and therefore also the mice had better survival. Our third finding was that the small cell lung cancer, when it was developing, was surrounded by the lung nerves. Importantly, we observed that in later stages of the progression of the small cell lung cancer, the presence of these nerves was decreased, and this suggested that small cell lung cancer, as they evolve, they become more independent of the lung nerves. Our fourth finding was that we established the relationship between the neuroendocrine cells and the non-neuroendocrine cells in the small cell lung cancer. So we observed that when we culture together the neuroendocrine cells with the non-neuroendocrine cells, we observed that these neuroendocrine cells were growing much faster and they exhibit much more electrical activity. We observed that the non-neuroendocrine cells were producing lactate that was making us think that the lactate could be providing this uh, fuel to the neuroendocrine cells. In this study, we found that electrical activity of lung cancer cells, they can be utilized to promote cancer aggressiveness. So with that finding, 
we hope that in the future, potentially we could use some drugs that are previously used to treat neurological disease. Um, can we repurpose them to treat cancer patients? I think that's something that is worth pursuing uh, for us and also for uh, all the scientists around the world.